The spectral theorem tells us that a symmetric matrix has an orthogonal diagonalization. But how can we find it explicitly? Even with a small matrix, this can be quite tricky, as you will see in the following example. We'll take a 3 by 3 matrix A. And I'll just skip over the computation of the eigenvalues. You yeah, need the characteristic equation for that. And then you will find a lambda is 0 with algebraic multiplicity 2 and a lambda equals 3 with algebraic multiplicity 1. Uh, so let us do the lambda equals 0 first. That's the tricky one. So uh, we want to find a base for the eigenspace. Uh, so we compute a minus lambda i3, which is of course just a now because lambda equals 0, augment with zeros and do row reduction. That's easy in this case because the lower two rows drop out immediately. So we see that at least our eigenvalue has a geometric multiplicity of 2. So we find two independent eigenvectors. We solve, we, you know, we have a pivot over here, we can take c2 and c3 free. We solve for c1 and we write down the parametric vector form. So far, so good. There's our solution. Uh, then we move on to the second eigenvalue, lambda 2 equals 3. So we compute a minus 3 times uh, the identity matrix, so minus 2 here, minus 2 here, minus 2 here. And we augment with zeros, then we get this augmented matrix. We do some row reduction. You can do that yourself. I skipped the row reduction steps. And here we have the reduced echelon form. We have one free variable, two pivots over here and over here. Uh, we can take C3 free, and here's our solution. Oh, only C C3 free, of course, that's an error. And then uh, uh, here we have our solution x with an eigenvector 1 minus 1, 1. So there we have our first eigenalization, A equals PDP inverse, with our P over here and our diagonal matrix over there. However, it is an orthogonal diagonalization. Well, let us take a look. If we compute the inner product with V1 and V3 and V2 and V3, we observe that this inner product equals zero. However, the inner product between V1 and V2 is not equal to zero, so this is a diagonalization of A, but not an orthogonal one, even though our matrix A is symmetric. So what went wrong? Can we find an orthogonal diagonalization? What do we have to do? So what's going on here? We have the following situation. We have our V1 and our V2. They span together the E lambda equals 0. Now the, we have the E lambda equals 3, and our factor V3. Well, the V3 is already orthogonal to both V1 and V2. So that one is okay. Uh, but what about V1 and V2? Well, V1 and V2 are eigenvectors, but any a linear combination of V1 and V2 is also an eigenvector. So instead of choosing V1 and V2, we can also choose as our eigenvectors to V1 and the V2 prime over here. So this projection of V2. It's a linear combination of V1 and V2, so it's still an eigenvector. And then we can take as our eigenvectors, instead of V1 and V2, we take V1 and V2 prime, and we have two orthogonal eigenvectors. Now, how are we going to find this V2 prime? Well, we recognize, hopefully, the gram schmidt procedure already over here. So we are going to use a uh, gram schmidt to form an orthogonal basis of e lambda equals zero instead of the basis we had. So there we go, gram schmidt So as our first new eigenvector, we just pick v1 prime equals v1, and always pick one. And as our second eigenvector, v2 prime, we take, the, uh, pro uh, we take v2 minus its projection on v1 prime. So there we go, you see the familiar projection formula. So we have our v2, compute the coefficient, it's minus one half. And as a resulting new eigenvector, we have one half, one and a half. And now you observe that these two, v1 prime and v2 prime, are orthogonal. So now you have an orthogonal basis of your eigenspace e lambda equals zero. So we have a second diagonalization, a equals pdp inverse, where we put our old uh, v1 prime and v3 and our new v2 prime, d remains, remains the same, of course. Do we have an orthogonal diagonalization now? Well, you have to be a bit careful. Okay, all those inner products are zero, so the eigenvectors now are orthogonal to each other. But for an orthogonal diagonalization, you need an orthogonal matrix, square matrix, orthogonal columns with length 1. So you also need to normalize your columns in your P. 
Well, no problem. Finally, we can find our orthogonal di diagonalization by normalizing the length of those three columns. So we have our final P. Now, still, of course, we're just changing the length, so they're still orthogonal. So we have orthogonal columns, and all lengths are one now. That's how we made them. So now our P is an orthogonal matrix. So we have found A equals PDP inverse with P an orthogonal matrix. So there we have our orthogonal diagonalization of our matrix A. As you see, this can be quite a lot of work.